everybody, and welcome to the Supernatural Substation on Friday, January 12th. It's our first live show of the new year. So welcome us. Bernadine, are you there? Hey, happy new year. Same to you. How's it going? Going good. I'm it's only 10 days old. A little bit better, huh? Wait, what? I said hoping this year is a little bit better. A little bit. It's got to well, be a lot, lot better. Yeah. <laughs> a lot better for be me positive. anyway. That always works. <laughs> well, did you eat your cabbage and your black eyed peas? I did not. Uh-oh. I don't know then. You're supposed to eat cabbage for money. and But you're, you're out there in Cajun country and you don't know that? <laughs> Yeah. Or, or nobody I mean, cooked it. Nobody cooked it. <laughs> lazy, lazy Cajun. <laughs> yeah. I had, um, we had the cabbage and black eyed peas. And I had so many black eyed peas that I gave all of what I had to my brother. And he called me and he said, why do I have all these black eyed peas? And I'm like, because I don't want them in the house. I, I just, yeah, they, yeah, they're not a favorite of mine. You know, they're not like red beans. They taste like sand, you know, but you got to yeah. eat them. You got to eat them. So if you're going to have cabbage for money. And the beans are for good luck. And the pork that you put in the cabbage is for, like, health and plenty. So, you know, so we do it every year. Nothing ever changes. <laughs> Sometimes it does, but it's like, damn, you know. I remember one time, this is funny. Um, I have my niece when she was little. Um we were eating all at, at her house, my brother's daughter. And she was she was about, I don't know, six, seven maybe. She knocked something down in the kitchen. And, and my brother said, well, you've got to clean that up before you come sit down. So I went in there to help her. And she's on the floor and she's rubbing, she's rubbing up whatever it is that she spilled. And she's like, nanny. And I said, yeah. And she said, I ate those black eyed beans and cabbage, but I don't seem to be having very much luck. <laughs> but it's like... <laughs> You poor thing. You know, she's down there on her, like, Cinderella, scraping up, you know, whatever it was she spilled. So that always sticks in my mind when I think about it. Got to do it. What you going to do, you know? But, dead, yeah. Our dead ancestors will, will rat us out if we don't. So, But anyway, so uh, you got resolution? Yeah, uh, I'm back on my keto diet strictly. Oh, Lord. Yeah, I kind of fell off the wagon for a minute. Well, you it, it it burns it off real quick. So diet, diet, yeah, that's that's mine too. I have to get off this seafood diet. <laughs> <laughs> See it, there it is. If I look at it, mm -hmm. what am I gonna do? You know, I got Susie Q's on my hips from 1978, <laughs> back <laughs> when I could eat all that, and it went to the you know to infinity, and I never picked up any weight. So, but uh, yeah, we've had. Um, this is our first actual live or, you know, recorded but live show that we're doing this year. So, and we've got some great guests coming up because uh, you're cooking. Because Dean is, is, you're the one, I'm telling you. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you rock when, when, uh, when you get those guests. Speaking of rock, too, you got us a great guest for tonight. Um, a legend. We've got a legend in the house tonight. <laughs> Yeah, Keith Age is going to join us tonight, and God, I hope I'm saying that name correctly, because I don't know any other way to say it, but um, that's what I've always heard. So, everybody into the paranormal should know who he is. There'll be a test after this episode. No, <laughs> he's been around. I remember the first time I saw Keith Age, it was on uh, Children of the Grave, um, on that documentary. And I, he was uh, he was doing a tour, giving some people a tour, but he was also there to investigate uh, Waverly Hills. So that's the first time I, I saw him. And uh, he's been so he's been around for a long time. And uh, he's also known as the rock and roll ghost hunter because he's been a musician uh, even longer than he's been investigating the paranormal. Um, so he's a you know a well known and familiar face. Anybody who's watched any of the uh, you know, the popular paranormal shows like on, you know, Discovery Channel, Destination America, um, even, you know, even worldwide, like on the BBC or Space Channel. Um, he's, been, he's been on, I think, over, over 30 shows, 30 different shows. And he is uh, the producer of uh, that spooked series with uh, the Booth Brothers. And um, 
They did the uh, Waverly Hills one. They did Children of the Grave, uh, The Haunted Boy, um, the, what is it, Soul Catcher. They did that one. And uh, what's the other one? The Unseen. I haven't seen that one yet. I have to... I have to really look into it and see. I, I didn't catch that one, but I, I've had I have all the other ones, and oh, the possessed as well. So, and the haunted boy was the one about the actual real life exorcist uh, story, because the real life exorcist that the movie was based on, um, or exorcism, was a boy and not a girl. In the movie, they made it a girl. So, um, so I have that one too, and I, I've seen that several times. So. And like I said, he also plays in a band, and uh, he's, you know, he does, he's a speaker and well-known speaker, and also, um, I mean, we're excited to have him on, and uh, I'd like to hear some of his spooky behind-the-scenes stories, because <laughs> I was reading in his bio that he often speaks about what goes on behind the scenes, um, you know, so as an investigator, I'd like to uh, catch him up on that. So, yeah, that's that's our guest tonight. And he'll be joining us in a little bit. Um, but uh, before we go, we know we're down here in New Orleans when Mardi Gras season. You ready for that, Bernadine? Oh, my goodness. It's crazy <laughs> around here. Well, that's right, because you're closer to a parade route. Smacked <laughs> in the face with beads every year. Yeah. Everybody, everybody thinks it's so great, you know, and it is. I mean, if you're from somewhere else, you know, but mm -hmm. I, I just said I never have had... There's pictures of me just frowning <laughs> at, at Mardi Gras parades when I was little, like, you know. And then when I had my daughter, I got to do it to her, stick her up in a box on a ladder and make it, <laughs> you know. But, um, yeah, we're heading into that now, so all of this is coming on. And I don't know, we got some good guests coming up this this, uh, this year, and uh, we have more lined up after that. So I'm, I'm excited. You, you're excited for the new year? Oh, yeah. I'm I think we have some, some awesome guests. Yeah, stay yeah, tuned. So. Stay tuned to this channel. Watch this space because we've got exciting things to come. All right. Well, we're going to head out to a break and uh, we're going to come back in and bring in our guest, Keith Age, in just a couple of minutes. So hang in there, everybody. Welcome back, everybody, to the Supernatural Substation. Uh, Bernadine Richardson, my co-host, is with me. I'm Aline Pastanio, and we have our guest this evening, Mr. Keith Age, the legendary Keith Age. Welcome, Keith. Hey, hey thanks for having me on. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, it's, we've been wanting to have you on for a while, and so I'm glad, glad that we could get you on here. No problem. Like I said, thank you. I appreciate it. How's your new year going? Uh, slowly getting over the flu. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, it's going around. I know a lot of people that had it, but, uh, you were sick yeah. for the holidays. I was sick since December 2nd. Oh, wow. Well, you better, you better watch out. It must be cold. Where are you at in Kentucky or, or. It, yeah. In Kentucky, it's real cold right now. Spitting the snow and raining. They've got an Arctic blast coming, so you got to stay in and stay warm. <laughs> that'll yeah. turn into something else. Us old creaky old folks want to don't want the flu to go bad, but but yeah, I introduced you, and uh, I was saying to Bernadine the first time that I saw you was watch, I was watching the Booth Brothers uh, Children of the Grave when y'all were doing Waverly Hills, and yeah, that, uh, that's 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 actually spooked. Spooked, yeah. It's spooked the Spook TV. I guess it's a series of documentaries, is it? That all yeah, fall under. Yeah the, yeah, the very first one was Spooked, the Ghost of mm -hmm. Waverly Hills, and then they, you oh. know, after that, the, the you know, Ghost Hunters came out and 
2005 <clears throat> and we came out in 2006 and uh it was just a big hit on sci-fi and they were like well what else you got and we're like going uh <laughs> we hadn't filmed anything at that point and then that's when we filmed children of the grave oh okay all right then i i first saw you then in children of the graves and i've probably seen that previous documentary too i probably have since seen it but that's the one i remember you most vividly from because you were kind of to me you were like the guy at waverly hills like you knew all of the, the the stories and you know the most haunted areas and it is on dean's and uh, my bucket list to, to go there and um so maybe you can share some of those stories with us. Yeah, no, I was there from 2000 to 2005 and mm -hmm. uh, started all the tours and everything and helped clean the place up. And, uh, and then uh, the last time I was there from two was 2005 when the series came out and then I couldn't do both because we had to go film and, Mm -hmm. I couldn't do the tours or anything else anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. Plus, it was becoming you know a, a one two night a week thing to six nights a week, and I was like, I can't do this. Plus, trying to keep a hundred hour job a week, you know, it was oh, just wow. too much. Yeah, yeah, you can't keep up with that. So, uh, because you're right, it exploded um, right around that time. Mm -hmm. uh, everything was just like you know, and then Waverly Hills, Waverly Hills, and. You saw it everywhere. Everybody was trying to get up there, and um, but yeah, you you were there at a good time. You were there like before it really was discovered. So, um, and it's a pretty intimidating place, I would say. I mean, what do you what are your thoughts about it um, and about your time there? Oh, I love Waverly Hills. Uh, you know that was they closed it in nineteen eighty one, and uh, I was still in high school then. And of course, everybody you know, had stories about, you know, different things. And then when the Mattingly's bought it in that, in early 2000, you know, I went to them with my group, the Louisville Ghost Hunters, and said, hey, you know, if you'll let me investigate the place, you know, we'll help you clean it up. And uh, that's what, exactly what happened. And uh, the... You know, people are used to seeing what, you know, the very clean looking building. But back then, you'd walk through the hallways, you had two feet of dirt and, uh, you know, debris and leaves. And, you know, just walking through the hallway, you, you had to shuffle your feet because you didn't know what you're going to walk into. And uh, out front, people had just dumped off dishwashers and, uh, you know, washing machines and you name it. It was just oh, wow. looked totally different. It was really run down. And the Manningleys have really done a good job of fixing it up. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, it didn't, well, and it didn't look pristine either. It had that aged look and that creepy look after you guys got finished with it. So I can only imagine. It's terrible that people go dump their junk anywhere, you know, so that's terrible. But, um, at least they didn't dump it in it. I guess they were too scared, <laughs> scared to go in it, right? Um, but some of the things like, um, you know, that we watched and that we hear repeatedly, the nurse, you know, hanging herself and all. Is this all true? Uh, what, do, what are your experiences there? Have you experienced those hauntings? I know you have others that you probably haven't talked about. Uh, I've never experienced the nurse, but it is true. I actually have the death certificate uh from there from mm -hmm. that certain nurse and uh, she did hang herself and uh, just outside of room 502 and uh, mostly they call it death by misadventure but uh basically she had a child by one of the doctors there and then stuffed the child in the cistern when she had it and then went and hung herself so it's pretty Go gruesome, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that is pretty gruesome. And so she wants, I know, 502. And there must be patients there um, walking the halls and everything. I've, I've seen not only from you guys filming, but other, other people in there, a lot of shadow entities, uh, you know, left and right. They're always seeing them. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, was, that was a big part of the tour, especially on the fourth floor. Uh, and... When we first started giving the tours, 
just every now and then you'd see something moving. But then we start learning. If you just drop your eyes to the ground and you re- use your peripheral vision, you can see a whole lot more things right. happening. And these things eventually started coming out and basically mingling with us. Oh, wow. And they just, yeah, that's creepy. <laughs> they just walk along with you. So what do you think, yeah, Dean? And- Go ahead. Go ahead, Keith. No, I was just going to say, if you heard the story about the guy getting his head busted open with the bricks, well, that was me. And, uh, yeah. What happened? Uh, oh, it, it happened several times. Uh, the, the first one, we were giving a tour, and it got really quiet, and I heard it coming at me, and I was standing behind a young lady directly over her shoulder. And talking to her, telling her what to do to you know, try to see this stuff. And heard it coming down the hallway. It was just a big chunk of cement that hit me right under the brim of my hat and just busted me wide open. Oh. And uh, and then the very last time was the last day I was there. Uh, we were doing a interview on uh, Fox Channel Live. And uh, the anchor man who was with me, the reporter, we come out of the fourth floor uh, stairwell and walked into the uh, the shot. And as we're standing there, this big chunk of cement come flying off the wall from behind me and just took me right off my feet and oh, just knocked the heck out of me. And oh, yeah. and then the uh, the reporter is he's actually running, screaming down the hallway because he's just scared to death. And the cameraman's going. Get up, say something, and I'm going, where the hell am I? You know, it just really rattled me pretty good. I'm not laughing at you being knocked out on the floor, but I'm laughing at those two. One is standing there wanting content, you know, basically. Get up, get up. No. no. I mean, I'm hopefully you weren't really seriously injured by this. Oh, I don't like stitches like the next guy, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool, pretty awesome. You know, I'm I'm a musician from the 70s, and, you know, I don't have many brain cells left, so when something weird happens, I usually don't go, oh, let's go running away. I go, ooh, wait a minute, let's check this out. You can say, you know, you heard, like, you know, that reminds me when I was at that concert, you know, and somebody threw something. I mean, yeah, you can, we, we're, we're pretty good troopers coming out of the music of the 70s or coming out of the 70s, like some of us. I don't know. Survived better than other ones, but do you think it was like the same same spirit that that always did that, or it was other like different spirits that uh you know that would attack you like that? Well, I, I'm of the mind. I've been doing this almost fifty years now, mm-hmm. and I'm of the mind that if you're mean and evil when you were alive, you're probably mean and evil when you're dead. Absolutely, and, I agree. You know, you know. Yeah, so Dad. there's no telling. Yeah, there's no telling. Who or when we got, you know, doing things. It's just like, you know, people say they, they see Big Black and the Creeper. And as far as I know, I'm the only person to ever get Big Black on film. And uh, we were filming for uh, the BBC, their big uh, paranormal show that they had over there for years. We mm-hmm. actually caught him just filling up the hallway coming at us. It's Big Black. I mean, I may have seen something, but I didn't know he had a name. This is a shadow entity. Well, it just—it's a big black shadow that just fills up the hallway and will rush you. Mm. And uh, like I said, we'd seen it several times, but we'd never been able to capture it on films. And while we were shooting Creepy Canada for the BBC, it just came right at us. And I mean, the cameraman almost fell over backwards. That's how fast and how quick it came up at us. Wow. And do they have episodes of the show that we can check it out? Well, like, is it streaming uh, like somewhere? Said, it, it, was, it was called Creepy Canada, and then uh, the whole catalog got bought out by Destination America. And oh. uh, now it's called Horror and Something Else. So it is oh. on its episode 302 and 303. 302 and 303. Well, Dean, uh, let me bring you in here. I know you got some questions for Keith, especially about Waverly Hills. Go ahead. Yeah, I have a friend. I, I think you remember him, Eileen. <clears throat> His name's Liberty. Yeah. 
You remember Liberty? Well, mm -hmm. he went to Waverly Hills, and I don't know what floor it was on. I don't know how many floors Waverly Hill has, but it was one of the top floors. And um, he's in a hallway, and he has a, a ball that rolls. He rolls it out, and it rolls back to him. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, you think I think I've done that's, many That's years. probably on the fifth or fourth floor, yeah. Yeah. He said yeah, that... Um, Wait, I'm sorry. <clears throat> yeah. Due to tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. Was it tuberculosis they had? Um, yeah. Right, yeah. Right, you, you got to remember, this was the white death. This was a plague. They had no way of stopping it. And Louisville was basically a big swamp. And this disease just came in and sat down on top of it and germinated it. And, you know, all they had was good, clean, fresh air, all the wholesome, healthy food you could eat, and and sunlight. That was the only thing they had to feed it, you know, and, and of course, that wasn't working. That's why so many people died there. And, uh, you know, when you're talking about the ball, uh, it's associated with a little boy named Timmy. And as far as I know... I'm the only one that's ever got a picture of Timmy. And like I was saying, with uh, all the dirt and debris and everything in the floor, when I first started doing the tours, I had a bad habit of walking backwards and talking to the crowd. And one night on the second floor, I tripped over something. And, of course, I landed real hard backwards and looked down to see what I tripped over and is is a little leather ball you know they don't make leather balls anymore haven't since the early 50s and this was you know 2000 and uh, of course you know we were all excited so we took the ball from the second floor and put it up on the fifth floor so i got done with the tour and we went back in to check it out when we went up to the fifth floor it's gone and it's down on the first floor and this went on for the rest of the night you know moving to different floors and stuff and then by 6 a.m., we went to go to the last place where we'd put the ball, and uh, it was gone. So, you know, wow. there was, there is an actual little leather ball that's floating around in there. Somebody's playing with that. <laughs> it likes playing jokes on people. Um, one of the things, whenever anybody went, mentions Waverly Hills, they think the, of the death tunnel, the tunnel that um that right. goes down and um so i i know you how do you feel about it? is it is it first of all i heard that it collapsed not around the time that you guys were doing stuff but later is that true did they have a collapse in the tunnel no they've actually enclosed the entire tunnel the tunnel goes used to go completely up to the building and then it got tore down in the late 80s early 90s part of it did and then the Mattingleys have rebuilt all that. That's that's where the the, the story comes from. But it didn't collapse. Oh, uh, okay. The tunnel itself was. I you know you got to remember there was there's been three Waverly Hills up there before the one you know now, uh, and it sits up on top of a hill. You know the highest one of the highest points in Jefferson County here in Louisville, and. Uh, that that tunnel was built before the main hospital was built, and it was used basically for people to walk up that tunnel to get to work, and also bring up supplies, and uh, to, you know for the hospital to be built, and then because uh, it's all steam fed, and you know you stay dry and, and you stay warm in the winter, and uh, it's four hundred eighty five feet. You know, all steps, long steps, three steps that are three and a half feet wide and, you know, long. And then on one side, you've got a flat surface that they had a rail car, an electric rail car to bring up supplies with. And that's, that's where it got the name Death Tunnel, you know, because basically it would sink morale if everybody saw how many people were, they were carrying out of there every day. And so that's why it was all closed off. But, uh, and then, you know, at the very bottom of the tunnel, there's train tracks, and that's where they would take the bodies, you know, load them onto the trains and get them going to wherever they needed to be. Wow. 
but they did use it for for bodies. That's that's wild. I didn't make that walk. I made it as a young person. <laughs> I love them steps. I, I admire that. <laughs> What did they do? Put them in the courts and roll them to the train and bury them in mass graves? Yeah. No, they, they, they got up here and they put the bodies on the carts, the electric cart, and then they'd bring them down to the train or the hearse that was there to pick them up and take them wherever they were to be buried. There were no mass burials at, at oh. Waverly Hills. Okay. Well, I must be thinking of Pavilion Island, my other bucket list place. Pavilion. Well, I know that. Um, now, in one of the documentaries, though, um, I thought it was Children of the Grave, but it must have been at Waverly that um, the guys were walking around looking at the numbered graves. That 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 wasn't at Waverly. No, though, that that's think. no that that was up in Illinois in Children of the Grave. Oh, okay, okay. Well, because it all gets, over the years, it all gets, you know, whipped up together and you begin to wonder, you know, what's true and yeah, what's not. Well, yeah. Well, that's true. That's like my wife has seen all those shows and we've made 10 movies and mm -hmm. uh, they are they are now on, you know, streaming on Tubi and Amazon, several other different streaming places, Apple. And yeah. uh, we were watching Children of the Grave and Children of the Grave 2 and the possessed and of course you know i'm talking while it's showing and she's like this is wild all the behind the scenes stuff she that you don't hear in the movie and i'm like well you know i'm just telling you what happened <laughs> you know? yeah all of it well so that's a good segue into uh it's you you basically uh joined the booth brothers and the rest of their uh um I guess documentaries that they started, uh, the possessed, and I think was that the next one after you finished with uh, with Children of the Grave or with Waverly? Yeah, it was Spook, Children of the Grave, and then the Possessed. Mm -hmm. Those were the first three. And then you did Haunted Boy too. Now, possessed. Yeah. What, what is what is Possessed about? If you refresh me, um, it, the I, I don't remember, so I have to let okay. you tell me. The Possessed is about the Wasika Wonder, the very first documented case of possession in America. Okay. And uh, up in Illinois at the Roth House, uh, John Whitman still owns that place and uh, still does, does tours and stuff. It's really cool to go up there and just learn about the history and stuff. And uh, actually in the new show that I'm producing called Bourbon Spirits, which is mostly a lot of stuff around Kentucky, uh, which Shannon Eden's Humphrey is the star of the show. We actually went up to the Roth House and spent a weekend up there filming because it's one of my favorite places to go. Well, we're going to get to your new your new show after we go through your your experiences with the other one. And you, uh, so that's two possession movies in a row you did. Then Haunted Boy was um, obviously. That's the true exorcist story. That's the true story behind the the exorcist book and, right, and then of, the movie of, they made. Of, right, of Roland Doe, yeah. Yeah, so you did that. And they, it, it, they found a diary, or they were given a diary. Um, well, the diary itself is actually locked up in the Vatican in Italy. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've tried to get them to let us look at it and they would they wouldn't let us do it and, <laughs> yeah and uh then we actually got a copy of it and uh that's how we found the different places where they kept the boy and did the uh exorcisms and stuff and then uh the one place where he stayed and spent a lot of time uh they had all of his possessions locked up in a military installation, and uh, it's still there. And we actually, they had, they, they drew M16s on us because we wanted to go see it. You know, think if you've ever seen Raiders of the Lost Ark, where the very last shot of the movie is they're, they're putting the Ark of the Covenant in a great big facility. Uh, that's kind of what they had here. All of the boys, you know, uh, his bed nightstand, uh, lamp, all that stuff is just locked up. 
you know, being being locked up. So you really are kind of like Indiana Jones, though. Oh no no no, no 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> no. no! I can just no, picture huh? you though. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I guess they would lock it up because you know inanimate objects can have uh, you know attachments to them, and, and uh, you know if it, they could jump off the boy and jump into that. So I guess that's smart to do um, is lock them up. But so I remember, I remember this. The, he was in St. Louis, I think, the, the uh, child at one point, or the boy at one point, um, and he moved all over. And where was, there was one scene um, where they went up in the attic, I think. Was it in St. Louis at the old um, the old hospital or the old uh, monastery yeah. or somewhere? Yeah, yeah. At, at the old hospital. And, uh, yeah, we went, his room was up in the attic. He came up off the elevator and turned right, and that's the only room up there. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was really wild. And I mean, there was uh, Chris and Phil and I all three got sick after filming that. Really sick. Uh, you know, I had a heart mm-hmm. attack. Chris, I remember that. Uh, yeah, Chris had several different things happen to him, and they filled it too. But we think a lot of that is because when we opened the door to go into the room, it had so much. Uh, stuffing from the attic and stuff just on it was like four feet thick of Mm -hmm. you know just everything on the floor and we had to walk through all that so we were walking through asbestos and all kinds of stuff maybe that that did it but maybe not a lot of people said the devil did it you know well, what do you but do you think it's possible or do you really put it down to well I mean you had a heart attack um, but you didn't have a history of anything, did you? No. Uh, I didn't, well, before the heart attack, I actually had brain surgery. Uh, mm. My blood pressure was way too high and uh, a lot of water on my brain. And oh, uh, no. that's that's what started that. And then during all that, I had a heart attack and then uh, went on to have five more. You know? <laughs> so oh, anyway, it's mostly bad, mostly bad living, you know. Acting up with you, huh? Oh Lord! Oh my God! I mean, we're we're glad to have you here. I mean, that's all I can say. Wow, you, you're quite a fighter. Yeah, well, put him in a bubble and right, yeah, bubble with a hard hat. Hey, you know, you know, three gunshot wounds and multiple knife wounds. Who knows? Hey, you're back up a, here. Wait, three. Nobody says three gunshot wounds and then doesn't tell us how. How'd you get? Uh, who shot at you? Uh. Again, I'm a child of the 70s, and, you know, the whole sex, drugs, and rock and roll, I lived it. So, you know, it's just uh, being young, dumb, stupid, and being somewhere where I probably shouldn't have been. You're running out of the back door, right? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely the Allman Brothers, running out of the back door. Well, like I said, 1979, I was 16 years old, and I'm playing bass for Ted Nugent all over the world. Wow, so, you know, mm-hmm. you know that that was my introduction to playing music everywhere, and then you know I played with a lot of different people. Uh, mm-hmm. You ever heard of the Kentucky Headhunters? Yes, yes, we I all have. grew up together. We all grew up together playing music, and wow. uh, I, I knew I knew them back when they were called Itchy Brother. I don't remember, but I do remember the Headhunters. Yes, indeed. Yeah, and uh-huh. then now you got now you got the sons of the Kentucky Headhunters, Blackstone Cherry, who mm. is really doing good right now. Well, that's good. Thank God, because we need some good music out there. Um, the stuff they've got, <laughs> I sound like an old fogey. The stuff they have these days, <laughs> it's just bad. <laughs> I don't like it. Oh, yeah. But yeah, we're lucky to to have gotten this interview with you. <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah, pretty um, much. Well, now, so all of this takes you into contact with, like, the supernatural, because I know after that, y'all uh, y'all did Soul Catcher, uh, or sometime, I don't, I don't think that was exactly the right one after The Haunted Boy, like, chronologically, but, so, you've been, I know that I, I read that you don't, you don't really do a metaphysical approach, so I assume that means, like, no occultism and no, you know, mediums and stuff like that. So, what is what is your approach well, to paranormal well, research? Well, I, I, I don't disagree with mediums. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I've been, I've been told that I hate mediums and that I've shot one. I did not <laughs> shoot her. I shot over her head. <laughs> okay? Okay. And, uh, 
you know, Scotty Rourke is one of my best friends, great medium. Rick Hayes is one of my best friends, another great medium. Uh, Chris Fleming and I go way back. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't think I've got a psychic bone in my body. And, you know, honestly, if I was psychic, I would have ducked when all the rocks got thrown at my head. You know, stirring them up. That, that you being yeah. there, so it's, I mean, it's interesting that you got hit in the head by rocks twice. You know, and you, it was yeah. you. So you do, you must have something that kind of stirs up the energy. But yeah. how did well, you start approaching yeah. paranormal research and and all that? Uh, let me ask you that. Well, Wait, you were you were you were you know you were a professional musician and did did you like have experiences when you were younger and then you went into paranormal research or? Um, how did you how did you get the you know the the vibe for that and then start the you know your uh, ghost society and all that when did that come about or how okay, well when I when I was a kid no I didn't think anything about ghosts I loved horror movies you know I loved all the Hammer movies and the Universal <laughs> stuff but I never thought about ever actually going and hunting ghosts like I said my whole world from the time I was you know ten years old on was sex drugs and rock and roll Mm -hmm. and uh you know i lived ate and breathed playing music and when i came back from being on tour when i was 17 i met this young lady who would never take me to meet mom and dad and i just kind of figured it's because i got hair down past my butt i've got a brand new flashy camaro uh, the whole rock and roll look. I wore a lot of leather. And uh, on her birthday, her mom and dad actually invited me to come over for her surprise party. And when I went over there, I knocked on the door and she answered and she was just like, oh my God, I can't believe you're here. And I was like, look, your parents invited me, you know, so I think it's pretty cool. And she said, no, you don't understand. She says, we have a ghost in the house. And he doesn't like mine or my sister's boyfriends. And I went, yeah, right. Let's go smoke another one. And, uh, you know, we walk in. It's just a little ranch house. And we're sitting on the couch. You see down the hallway to the master bedroom. There's a mirror. We see our reflection. And something kept walking past it. Well, I'd go down there and tear the room apart. And there's no way there. And me being young, dumb, and stupid at that point started saying, calling this thing out saying show me do something prove to me you exist i don't believe in you and this went on for several hours so when we i went to leave i went to kiss her good night in the living room in front of the front door and when i'd been over to kiss her something grabbed my arm something hard tight and like i said you know i was 17 years old i I used to be a professional boxer at that point and uh you know, I could not move my arm. And first thing I thought was, oh, hell, dad's got a hold of me. But he's over sitting in a lazy boy with his eyes as big as saucers. And next thing I know, I'm flying backwards and I go through the front door, through the screen door. And I landed about six feet out on the ground on my back. And, you know, there was a bit of wind out of me. And I'm laying there kind of moving my fingers and my toes going, what's broke, what's not. And then I thought, that was so cool. Do it again. You know, and uh, that's how I got started in the paranormal world. You know, there was nothing like that back then. You could go to a library and you could, you know, get a few books on ghost hunting if you're lucky. But most of the books were stories of Sasquatch and UFOs. And, you know, you'd find a a book every now and then by Brooke or, uh, oh, God, I've just lost his name. What's his face? Uh, Hans Holzner. And, uh, yeah, and, you know, I didn't know that people actually did this stuff to start reading that, and it just went from there, and by the early 80s, I was actually, uh, well, not early, mid-80s, I was actually teaching at UofL uh, mm-hmm. class about the paranormal and, you know, and what I do, and, you know, of course, that was in the infancy stages of it, you know, like I said, I, you know, I think using a medium, a, a trusted medium that you know actually can get results is a great tool. But I can't quantify the feeling of a medium. and We're not at that point yet. 
uh, you know, but he, you know, a medium can get up there and say, I feel this, that, whatever, you know, and you can put your gear and equipment, aim it towards wherever he's talking about, you know, and it hopefully captures something. You know, people go, man, well, you know, we know ghosts exist. And I'm like, nothing has been proven yet. Not one single thing. And, uh, you know, if it did, we'd all have these long PhDs behind our names. And and we don't yet. Well, I gave a minute here because uh, we dropped, Dean dropped out of the call. I don't know what happened, but so it's just going to be me until we can get her back in. So um, I had another question to ask you about. Um, I, I think that you don't like orbs. <laughs> Is that true? You're the, you're the don't like orbs guy, right? I, I remember this. Right. And, you, and, yeah. and how did, yeah. How did that, well, I don't even really need to ask you, I know, because what happens is, what I I found was that there were some things that were strange, okay, they were like, they show picture, people would show pictures, and then freaking orbs started appearing in everything, everything's an orb, this is an orb, that's an orb, that, so I guess, did you get enough of it, and you just finally said that's it, because <laughs> I remember guns no. being involved, <laughs> like you were going to shoot somebody if they said an orb. <laughs> Well, what is, I'm, I'm a photography major, okay? Mm -hmm. And mostly what you get when you talk about orbs, it's dust, and it's a natural something, you know, in the vicinity that you take your picture in. And, you know, and I can recreate the orb of picture 99.9% .9 of the time. And when you can do that, it's not paranormal. Right. And uh, what 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 you're talking about with the orbs is, you know who Kate Hodder is? No, not really. Well, I might. I just don't recognize the name. So who's that? Okay. Kane is a friend of mine. We've been friends for a very long time, a drinking buddy. Okay. And uh, he's pl he's played Jason Voorhees the oh. most times mm -hmm. okay. on Friday the thirteenth. And we were in Ohio doing a convention. And had this little lady walk up, and Kane's next to me, and Troy Taylor was there too. And uh, she walks up, and you know, you get this all the time. What do you think of this picture? Well, you know, I'm I try to always do something nice, uh, mm -hmm. but most of the time I am pretty blunt. And I say, you know, it's a dust orb, and she goes, uh uh, that's my dead aunt Petunia. And I was like, no, and I stood up and I leaned over the table to tell her and show her why why this is a dust orb, and I felt a slap above my collarbone, and I thought, great, she's hit me, you know, I, I you know I made her mad, and as I look down, I go to try to move my arm, and I can't move my arm. I got a eight inch by two inch serrated blade jammed into my chest. Uh, because she didn't like what I had to say. So I went to move my arm, couldn't move it. Like I said, it jammed into my shoulder socket. That's how deep it went. And uh, I ended up swinging with my left arm and just put her on the floor. And I'm sitting there trying to pull this knife out of my chest, and Kane and them were going, sit down, stupid, leave it alone, you know. So she just got out of prison about a year and a half ago. So no, so no I, I don't like orbs. And yes, I do. No, have a t -shirt. I mean, that's, uh, 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 that's sticking to your, you know, your opinion. I mean, she's too willing to go down for it. <laughs> that was ridiculous. Oh my gosh. Yeah, she, yeah, she did. And after the trial, I asked for the knife back, and it's now my steak knife. Really? Really? So you, yeah. so they charged her and everything. You had her arrested? Oh my god. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they they took her out of there in the ambulance and cuffs. Uh, I wow. broke her jaw in three and broke her jaw in three places. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm and, sorry uh, about that. No, no, I wasn't. I'm still not sorry. No, but, I said I'm sure uh, she was sorry. Yeah. Oh uh, my gosh. I didn't know that story. Uh, well, I I guess you don't don't like orbs. Um, well, it's it's not just because of that, but as like I said, most of the time is because I can recreate it ninety nine point nine percent of the time. Mm -hmm. Out of the thousands of shots I've done, I'll tell you, I've only got one that you want to call a quote orb that I can't explain. 
and that was mm-hmm. at Waverly Hills mm-hmm. in the, the stairwell before there was ever any power back at that place. And this, you know, it looked like a ball to me when I opened the door coming mm-hmm. down the stairwell, and it lit up the entire stairwell. And uh, it actually looked more like a bell when by the time I got it developed. Uh, but like I said, it was giving off its own light source that was moving. I took a picture without a flash, you know, and like I said, you can see it clearly lights up the entire, uh, hallway and, uh, you know, what, what, uh, glass was left in the windows. You can see it's actually reflecting off of that. So I can't explain that. No, I mean, seeing it with your own eyes and everything, I guess not. That that that's a true, that is a true capture. That that's wild. I mean, you don't hear, you don't hear people talking about that. Um, and in God sense, the internet. Uh, I just, I, I'm kind of in your corner on the orb thing, <laughs> you know, because it's like there was clearly there was one. Um, oh, I don't know, some one of these compilations, you know, 50 of the most scariest, whatever. And there was, a, I don't know, you may have seen this and just passed over it, but there was this, a, a gas station, of course, probably. And they had this thing that was on the uh, the camera lens, and it looked it looked like it was standing out, you know, away from the building. But it, you could see it moving, and it turned, like, different colors in the green spectrum. And I'm like, that's a freaking grasshopper on there. You yeah, know, it's like, bug. it's an orb. It's an angel. It's a this and a that. And I'm like, you know, th- I, I guess you must you must think that way, too. Like, like it's great to have the Internet and because you can share all this information on valid stuff. But, I mean, my God, it's polluted the whole research. Um, I mean, oh, yeah. I don't even... I don't even know where to begin. I like how to describe how much it's polluted um, actual, you know, real research. Um, I think it set it back. I don't even know how much. It's just, you know, you can turn it on TikTok and everybody's like, this is like, now they figured out how to do filters and people just saying, there's this one ghost, man, that gets around. I can tell you, you know, look, it's a shadow entity walking, you know, and he's walk. He was in Malaysia. He was walking. He went to Peru. He's over here. And I'm like, my God, these are filters, <laughs> you know, <laughs> there no, yeah. there's no real, nobody's really doing the research. They're out there doing clicks and stuff like that. So, um, some of the old guard, I guess you guys are doing, there are some people that are genuine, but I, I just, uh, I just, I don't know. I, I understand your feeling. Now I know a little bit more why. So, <laughs> but <laughs> you have a really well, that's, valid that's, reason. That's one, that's, that's one of the nice things that I've always loved about Phil and Chris. Uh, the agreement they made with me at the very beginning of Spook was that if I could prove what something was or tell them what's causing it, they would say it. And they did do that. And that never varied off. Uh, you know, uh, you know, all the way from the, you know, the stuff that spooked, you know, and the way spooked got started was they came to Waverly Hills to film a little horror movie called Death Tunnel. You know, it's an independent horror movie, and uh, you know, and that's how we met. Actually, Chris and I didn't care for each other when we first met because uh-huh. here I've got this British guy sitting there giving me orders of things to do. And I'm like, look, I'm not an, an employee here. You know, I don't get paid to be here. And, uh, you know, for, we end up being the three of us like brothers. I remember, you know, they yeah. called me the third boot brother for years. And, yeah. uh, you know, and the very first thing we got that they called me and said, we need you to look at this. Do you know what dailies are? I do. Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay. Well, for those that don't, dailies are what Let's you shot that. the day You're before. You're saying they asked you. Wait. Yeah. Go on, Keith. I talked so, over you. That's all right. That, that's all right. Like I said, they just whatever you shot the day before, you mm-hmm. review it the next day, and it's called a daily. Mm-hmm. All right. So they called me and said, what is this? What is going on here? And uh, they shot, you know, when you, when you do an independent horror movie, You've got to have what I call the big blonde boob in the shower scene. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just, you got to have it. Otherwise, your independent movie doesn't sell. Right. So anyway, they got this girl in in a shower at Waverly Hills. And they, ha- they had it shot it 26 times. 
because it, something black would move in on the screen and from the left to the right and you know they were doing everything they could think of to stop this from happening and it never did and they said what is this and I said well it's a shadow person and uh, Bill Booth and his you know great English accent goes what's he doing to my shot mate and I said, I guess he liked the view. But they about drowned that poor girl, reshooting that thing 26 times. And that's what started the whole spook series. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, yeah, I, and from I remember there, that. There, yeah. and, and if you go watch Death Tunnel, the EVPs that you hear in the movie are actual real EVPs, mm-hmm. you know, that mm-hmm. were recorded while they were filming. You know, some of them got down the Death Tunnel. Others they got uh, up on the third floor, or the the one that says "TV is no fun," uh, and various different ones. Or "I want to go home," you know, or "We're dying here" is another one. Uh, that's all real stuff, and they left it in. So you know, it's really cool. They did, but that's that's really sad. Um, when you think about it, um, I mean, so you, you kind of got into with them and, uh, I don't know whether I, I really never talked to him about it either, whether they were like planning on doing documentary type horror stuff or if that kind of turned their head and then they started doing it. But yeah, I know you, you joined up with them and, um, I think soul catcher was next and that, that dealt with the native Americans. Now you had to have had some creepy experiences there. That you can relate. Um, Soul, Soul Catcher was after the Haunted Boy. Oh, and, okay, yeah, uh, right after. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we did. Uh, we also had some real life danger too. We uh, oh. went to a, you, uh, uh, Keith. I can't believe you would have real life danger. <laughs> we we went on this Indian reservation where the whole town just got up and left, and the school was empty and. You know, houses were empty, but, you know, plates and stuff were set out. And, uh, you know, of course, nature's taking it all back. And uh, we walk into this school. But the funny thing was, you know, I walk in and we're on Indian Nation. And, uh, of course, I wear a gun. Always have, you know. And uh, (laughs) our guy who is, uh, you know, uh, tribal police says, I'll take your gun. And I was like, okay, because white men cannot have weapons on Indian land. For real? So our, yeah, for real. Oh. You know, they have their own laws, and mm-hmm. you have to abide by them. So I gave a gun up to our guide, and we walk into this schoolroom, and it's getting dark, and the only thing I can see, I've got a thermal imager up in front of my face. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of blind except for the little three by three screen. And, uh, I walk in and I step on what I think is a branch. And when I do, you hear this, ah, and I went, okay. So the guy behind me, Adrian Scalva said, dude, I really hope that's your belly growling. He's going, no, man, I was hoping it was yours. And I said, well. Let's let's get out of here. This this ain't too cool. Till we get some light in here. And when I did, I stepped on the damn thing again. And I growled again. Well, I dropped the camera down so I could try to get my eyesight back. And we're backing out. And the next day, we're watching the dailies. And, of course, you see all this going on. And you see when I'm dropping the camera down, you're seeing my legs and what's behind me. And uh, all of a sudden, something behind me just lights up, you know, reds and whites and yellows. That means it's something living, you know, it's, it's giving off heat. And, uh, but it's upside down, so we can't tell what it is. Well, we turn the picture around, it's a mountain lion sitting there with his mouth wide open, and I've stepped on his tail twice. Oh, so ghost hunting can be fun. I, I kind of yeah, thought it was I, something alive when you when you were describing it, and I was thinking, oh my gosh, of you know what is that mountain lion or cougar or something? 
Well, yeah. I mean, why? And, and here I do not have my gun anymore. Right. And uh, so for Watson, the guy that was with us goes, I would have shot that, that lion. And I looked at him and said, dude, you'd have put 15 shots into all of us in front of you before you'd ever touch that thing. Well, I don't know how it stayed in the same position just so you could go walk on it. I mean, but seriously, you know, that's that's what I thought. I was like, that's not anything supernatural. I hear you're lucky you didn't get torn up. Oh, my gosh. Tell me about it. Tell me but about tell me it. about the supernatural <laughs> stuff, though, because I remember there was a there was a bunch of stuff in in that movie. Well, a lot of it happened during while we were on the Indian Reservation. And, uh, you know, we were in an old school, abandoned school where uh, someone was actually living inside of it. One of the big things was I had a thermal camera and we were in the gymnasium and there was this rope going outside the door and it was tied to a rock holding the doors in. It was really windy. And uh, I grabbed hold of the rope and I was like, I'd love to somebody pull this thing. Next thing I know, I'm being pulled across the floor. You can hear my boots just, you know, squealing on the floor. And uh, I remember getting off my camera to uh, fill up booths, and I put both hands on it, and this thing was still pulling me. And then Adrian went running outside, and he's like, there's nothing here. It's a rock. He says, you know. There's yeah. nobody here, and it's still pulling me across the floor. So, wow. you know, things There's like that are really there. cool. Yeah. yeah, I don't want to mess with Native American stuff like that. That is, that's creepy enough. Dean, uh, you got to bring you in here. I know you might have some questions, especially since you had dropped out for a little bit. So I'm going to hand it over to you for a minute. Yeah, yeah sorry about that. I had some technical difficulties. Keith, I wanted yes. to ask you, you've been on a lot of investigations and all. Um, have you ever bought anything home? Like, Not unless I've been drinking. Supernatural. <laughs> unless he's Dot, dot, dot. Well, uh, I know they, uh, you, you, you're pretty much a target when it comes to danger. I was just wondering if, if any supernatural being or anything paranormal ever came home with you from an investigation no not really uh like i said we were doing uh soul catcher we got blessed and smudged and stayed before we went in before we mm-hmm. left and uh you know if somebody wants that i think a lot of everything that we deal with you know, this is a faith-based hobby right now. That's all it is. Mm-hmm. And, you know, what you believe in is what you get out of it. And, you know, I don't think, you know, if you get up there and say, hey, you know, if there's something here, you cannot follow me home. You cannot follow me off this property. Uh, you know, that's my point of view. And, uh, you know, I don't get blessed or anything before I go into anywhere. And I've done this all over the world. And, uh, you know, even with <laughs> different tongue language, you know, and I've done Dracula's Castle five times, uh, you know, just various different places. And I think if you invite it, it's going to happen. But, uh, you know, I I think there's way too many people out there now that want to be famous and they think that, you know, they're going to get that paranormal shot and uh, they're waiting for something to happen. And when they hear the building creak and crack, they think, okay, Satan's in here on the loose with me. And, uh, you know, that's, that's just like, you know, people bring you pictures and go, what do you think about this? Think I can get this on TV? I'm like, mm. why don't you do the the work? You know, instead of trying to be famous, get up here and you know, what was the next step she took? What did you try to find out about this? Oh, nothing. I got this picture and I just thought it was great. You know, and and, and I hate to tell you this, but paranormal it pace, paranormal pace it sucks. Is. Yeah. Yeah. Paranormal uh, what sucks? Uh, 
pay. Yeah. <laughs> Money. Yeah, so, yeah well, what's that? Yeah, you're right. I mean, because if you're honest, you're really not going to charge people. Yeah, if you're not going to charge people, if you're honest uh, to do no, their I'm, I'm talking about being on. I'm talking about being on TV. Oh, uh, oh, yeah, um, well, yeah. Uh, you would know that, yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't, and, it doesn't uh, pay much. No, not at all, because we're not stag card holders. Green mm. Actors Guild. You know, we're just regular people. And uh, I'm not an actor. Don't claim to be. And, uh, you know, don't have a SAG card. So I'm not in the union. And so they can, you know, pretty much say what you work for. And it's not much. Uh, you know, now shows like uh, uh, Paranormal Caught on Tape, you know, they get paid a uh, you know, nice chunk. You know, my buddy Brian Kane was on that show and a couple mm -hmm. others. And, uh, you know, and that's good because, you know, they've got a show that's actually out there doing something. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, people are going, well, why are you still making shows about it? I said, because I love this industry. You know, I don't think we'll ever know what is really in, happening in my lifetime. But, you know, I'd like to be part of the the data takers that, you know, did help. Yeah, that is, yeah, I've thought about this in the past. It's like, you know, there are great people out there doing great work and nobody ever hears about them. But, you know, until until the serious people and the other people, until they, they make an agreement or somehow there's they agree upon, like, you know, a centralized place where people people that are respected across the board like like you know the british psychical society or the american psychical society like submitting evidence and with no expectation of it being you know being deemed right like in other words they'll say well you think you captured this but this is what it is until everybody um is willing to like submit their stuff to a neutral Gen, you know, just a neutral judge or a neutral board or whoever it is, um, you know, you're going to have all this. You, and, and like you said, 99% of, you we were talking about orbs, but I'm going to say 99% of what we see now, because all we see is this clickbait crap, you know, it's just, and it gives everybody a really bad, even if you show an interest in it, like you say, oh, you know, I write ghost stories and I, I research the paranormal, me. Oh, you know, you, you're you a witch. You're, spook you're into that spooky stuff. I mean, people, and it's because these idiots are out there with filters and, um, you know, try, now trying to make TikToks. And I don't think that, I don't know. I'm just saying until everybody who's serious about it is willing to let you know, a neutral uh, look at their evidence and, and be willing to say, oh, well, I thought it was that, but it's not. And accept that, you know, they're never going to really make any, any progress, like you say, in your lifetime. They're never going to make any progress un unless yeah, they're willing to step back. Right. And that's just like, uh, you know, several big name schools, you know, Penn State, UCLA, uh, NYU, they have got paranormal research development teams uh, to try and figure this stuff out. But it's like you just said, there's so many out there that want to fake the evidence or want just want to believe everything is paranormal when it's not. You know, that's that's like with, with the show that I'm doing now, Bourbon of Spirits. If we don't find something, you know, we say, hey, we don't didn't find anything. And uh, tell us about you know, your tell us about that. What is uh, Bourbon Spirits? Is that a uh... Is it Kentucky bourbon? <laughs> I was thinking to know <laughs> oh, it's bourbon and weighty. You know, he's in Kentucky, so maybe well, it's something to do with Jack. Well, my, my, yes, my favorite bourbon is Jack Daniels. Uh, right. I will say that, uh, okay. which Tennessee, which is Tennessee whiskey. But, oh, uh, you're right. I'm sorry. On look here live, and I forgot they're from Tennessee. Oh my God, I'm ashamed. Yeah. Uh, no, it's okay. I'm in Kentucky. Jack's made in Tennessee. Anyway, uh, the way that came about was, uh, you know, Kentucky has a lot, you know, it's known for its bourbon spirits, and uh, that was the hook for the whole show. And, you know, one of the, one of the best things that I, I love, I, I hate the shows that have, that go somewhere like Germany or Spain or somewhere, 
and they're talking and they get an American EVP back. You know, I'm like, yeah. oh, wait a minute, what? You know, you're, you're in Germany. And the so anyway. spirit is supposed to be from the year 13 something. And, right, you know, they can right. talk perfect American or perfect British English. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I've always been puzzled by that. Well, <laughs> we did a place here uh, across the river in New Albany uh, where a 200 year old axe murder happened to a German immigrant. And I brought in a German speaking person. Who, to do an EVP session, and we actually caught German EVPs, you know. Uh, and I'm like, you know, that's to me, that's the cool stuff. And if you could see this place, we're down in a dungy old place, it's got you know, mud floors, uh, 200 plus year timbers and steps. You know, it looks like you walked into some place, you know, from 200 years ago. And mm -hmm. that's that's the cool stuff, you know, if you capture things like that. Uh, that's just like I used, uh, you know, uh, sound-activated speaker lights. And, you know, we couldn't hear it, but they light up. And then we go back and watch the film and light and listen to it. And you can hear the somebody German speaking. J.C. Rosidas, who's the director of the series, I sent him the film because he wasn't with us for this shot. And uh, he come back, he says, okay, I hear the really strong German voice. He goes, but I don't know who it is. As you can clearly hear David Dominey, who was doing the interview, talking. He's got a, you know, a, a higher American pitch voice. And we started listening to it, and we went to David and said, what, what, what do you hear? And he says, somebody answering my questions. Oh, wow. And uh, I, won't, I won't get into what was specifically said because the series not out yet. But it'll be out next year. We're going to be filming the final episode for season one here in a couple of weeks. And it'll be streaming on YouTube uh, on the Alternate Realm uh, channel. Oh, cool. The next year, 2025 or this year? 2024. Oh, okay. So we're in, because we're in 2024. I know. I keep I forgetting. Know. I, I, I know. I said, yeah, I, just, I said that wrong. I'm sorry. That's fine. I'm, <laughs> I've been writing it and doing it wrong. It takes a while. It takes us old people like three months to figure out <laughs> where we are and what year it is and spring comes, you know. <laughs> so, well, um, that sounds exciting. And would it, okay, so tell me, I have to ask this, what, what bourbon is from Kentucky? Come on, there's a Kentucky bourbon. Which, what is oh, it? Oh, there's, there's a lot of Kentucky <laughs> bourbons. I know, You've but there's gotten... one that they, I can hear the commercial and it says, blah, 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 you know, good Kentucky bourbon. Tell me. <laughs> Maker's Mark. <laughs> that's it. That's it. There it is. I'm not. An, I don't drink anymore. I gave up drinking. <laughs> I don't drink. Oh, uh, okay. Maker's Mark. Thank you. Because that would yeah, keep me you up. Got, you go. You go out 30 miles from Louisville to mm -hmm. Bardstown, Kentucky, and that's where almost all the distilleries are. Uh huh. Good place. I mean, There's yeah, Jack, Jack's my favorite, buff, though. Yeah, buff, Buffalo Trace. Mm -hmm. It's it's made here in Kentucky. Mm. And, no, so uh, I guess so, I was thinking Maker's Mark. And yeah, Maker's, I would have stayed up Mark all night trying to figure it mm -hmm. Yeah, Maker's Mark is the most famous, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, after the 70s, I kind of transitioned to, like, maybe I'll drink, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, that didn't go over too well either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that sounds oh, like yeah. a great no. spirit. That that I can't wait to see that series when it comes well, out. Go, go on my Facebook page, and mm -hmm. we ha and also there's a Bourbon Spirits page, and we have uh, a couple of clips already out on them. If anybody cool. wants to go check them out, I am. Matter have fact, you ever gotten? Coolest... Oh, go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. No, you I go ahead. One of, the, one, one of the coolest things we got was actually at the Roth House, the Wasika Wonder House, where Shannon and her group are in the parlor, and they're doing an EVP session, and I'm filming this, and they asked if they could speak to the little boy who died there, and out of the left side of the screen, this mist appears and goes right over to Shannon. 
you know, but nobody saw anything. Mm -hmm. Wow. I was going to ask you that, um, since you didn't, since, you know, you orbs are not proof for you. I mean, what is proof? I've, I've seen, like, I've seen videos, like, down in the, the basement of the Lemp, uh, is it, no, not, Lemp is a castle. No, Lemp is the house, no. okay, no. the Lemp mansion. And, yeah. that you know, with the condensation, like, the sort of, basically a mist, following them around and moving independent. I mean, so, what is, what is proof for you, other than, like, if you don't see it with your own eyes, or, you know, so, would, if you, if you're going to see an apparition, like, would it be mist that would convince you? Would it be something that suddenly happens well, in well, not see, humidity? That's just like that's just like at Post Town Elementary, which is one of my favorite places to go to. Uh, we did an event there a couple of years ago, and me and my wife were actually sleeping inside the school. You know, they got a room set up to where you know a bunch of beds and people can crash there. And I just got done doing. Like five different tours. I was dead dog tired. It was middle of August. It was hot. And uh, I laid down the bed next to her, and she's being silly. She's not tired, and I'm wore out. Mm. And we're laying there and looking at each other, talking to each other, and I'm telling her, Robin, shut up. <laughs> shut up. I need to get some sleep. I got to be back and doing this again at nine o'clock in the morning. And, uh, as we're laying there, something grabbed my leg, and here I am looking at her face in the bed, you know, laying <laughs> next to each other. Next thing I know, I'm jerked out of the bed, and I'm looking at her belly. And, you know, it's actually pulled my sock off. So, yeah. you know, I know that that's a physical, you know, and a personal uh, yeah. event. Mm -hmm. But, and it didn't get caught on film, but, you know, it's things like that where you go, wow. Um, right. Going you know, on here. And, yeah. Yeah. And that's just like uh there's so many cameras up at Post Town. We were watching a playback of this fog just comes out of nowhere in the in the basement and you think, Okay, it's heading for the door, you know. Okay, 'cause that that would be the natural thing. But then it turns and it makes a right turn. Fog doesn't do that. No, you know, unless yeah. there's a, something blowing it, and there isn't nothing there to blow it. Uh, we uh, last Thanksgiving we shot uh, for the BBC there. Their number one show in England was called Breaking Dad, where this mm -hmm. father and son. Uh, the father is actually a very famous, you know, actor in in England, and his son. They go do these daredevil things. Well, they came, they wanted to do a ghost hunt. So they came to Post Town. And, you know, of course, they're playing it up for laughs and stuff. And then we get downstairs at the stairwell. And the father who is standing next to me literally screams and jumps into my arms. And he's like, what the bloody hell is that? And he thinks it's somebody playing a joke on him. Well, the son and Shannon, who was with me at the time, they go running around the, the thing and like, there's nobody here. And uh, this guy got really upset. And finally, I said, you know, you're either a really good actor or something's really wrong with you. He was turning gray. And, uh, you know, we'd been there maybe 45 minutes, which is supposed to have been an eight-hour shoot. And mm -hmm. he says, I, I need to get out of here. I said, well, let's take a break. And we go upstairs. Mm -hmm. And he goes out the door, and he doesn't come back. Oh, you know, so you know that's if you go look up Breaking Dad, um, you know, on YouTube, and it's it's actually on YouTube. It's really cool. Oh, wow, what do you think, Dean? I'm gonna sorry, have you broke to look up. that up. Breaking yeah. Dad. Well, that broke down. That yeah. Go ahead. That guy was out of there. Well, he guess he got what he came for. He was scared. You know, we often say this, Keith, about the, the popular shows and stuff like that. That um, you know, a lot of people say, "Well, they're faking, they're faking," and all. And you know, I maybe, but 
you know, they go to so many different places that the law of averages, you know, is that they're going to capture something real eventually because they go to so many places, you know, like ghost hunters and um, what is it? Ghost adventures, you know, and people just say, oh, you're, uh, you know, I mean, but it's, it, it, it's going to happen. The law of averages, if you go to like hundreds and hundreds of places, um, you're going yeah, to find something you real. Can't go to yeah. every, you can't go to every place and get possessed at every place. I'm sorry. Right. That's you're no, you're right about that. But, but some people like Derek um, Akora's thing. Oh yeah, Derek Akora. You remember him with Most Haunted? Oh he yeah, he was possessed yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Possessed well, every there's place. there's there's a couple T American TV shows that that happens every place too. Oh, and, and and they're all over YouTube and everything. And something's got to happen because well, it's entertainment. You got a forty minutes. Um, you know, in 20 minutes of commercial, so you got to fill up that 40 minute time, and people are not well, going to. That's why every TV show has a disclaimer at the very beginning saying, This is for entertainment purposes only. Yep. I just can't watch it when I know they're yeah. fooling around, you know? Yeah, my wife, uh, she's like, I can't watch these paranormal shows with you because I'm like yelling at the TV, going, Are you kidding me? Look at this. This is what it is, you know. And uh, you know, it's it's for ratings. And mm -hmm. you know, the ra the ratings is what sells the show. Obviously, and, yeah. Yeah. And I you mean, know, uh, you know, and that that's one of the reasons with bourbon spirits, that's one of the main things behind it. Like I said, if we don't capture something, we don't capture something. We don't spend a week there, we might spend one night at a different place. You know, doesn't mean it's not haunted. Just means it, nothing happened while we were there. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. uh, so I'm not going to get up here and tell somebody your place isn't haunted. You know, at all. Yeah, like it would be great to see real stuff in a real show, um, which you know kind of sounds like what you're going to be doing with Bourbon Spirits. But um, you know, to, then to tune in and see the the same old thing. You know, the same oh, and well, people running and scared and uh, well. No, I'm talking about that, that's like in Bourbon Spirits, we were filming a place called Henry Clay, and uh, there's they built the Hyatt Regency on right next to it. It's now part of the, of the whole city block, and our room was directly behind the stage of the main ballroom. They got four ballrooms in this place, to take, just so you can see how big this thing is. And uh, my wife was using the thermal imager. Because all the lights were off in the ballroom. And she was using that, just flicking it so she could see to go behind stage and go out the door and go to our, our room for something. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the room set up in round tables with eight chairs at each table. And in one picture she takes, you see there's a table there with, with chairs, empty chairs. And she took another picture, and the chairs are filled up. You can see oh. heads and shoulders. And then she took another picture, it was gone. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's the cool stuff. You know, mm -hmm. you're lucky if you're if you're able to capture it, you know. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Dean? What do you think about that? Well, <clears throat> I guess it is like Russian relate. Yeah. When you go to so many places, because... You can sit there for hours and hours and hours and hours and feel nothing, but sometimes mm -hmm. go home and you you actually have great, like, Class A EVPs, but you yeah. didn't hear anything with your ears the whole time. So you really don't know until you go through evidence or you actually physically feel or see apparitions or whatever you know some people can see that i can't i've never seen an apparition i agree with her i'm still waiting to see the satan tap dancing on a table in front of me and it hadn't happened yet you know that's just like uh, the little ghost hunter society that i run we get i got this call one night and this guy says you got to come out i'm getting ready to walk away from my house you know just let the bank have it and this was a fairly new house and a oh. fairly new subdivision. And I was like, well, what happened? He says, this other team came in here. They were here for 15 minutes, and they left screaming out the door, saying I had seven demons living underneath my stairs. 
you know, I'm like, well, well, what are some of the things that's going on? He says, the TV turns off and on by itself, volume. It changes channels. He says, you know, we have doors that open and close. And uh, when we get there, we spent six months there. And I found out the doors that open and close, no, they actually open because they're out of plumb. You know, they don't close. And then the TV, he's got it on the wall next to the house, next to him. And it's only six feet of space between them. And I have, I just go over to the next door neighbors and I said, you don't by chance have a TV on this wall, do you? He says, yeah. And I said, well, do you mind if I ask where you got it from? He says, I got it from Walmart. It was such a great deal. Well, you know, that TV, the back of it is facing the house where the other TV is in that house. So I asked the guy, the owner of the house, I'm like, where'd you get your TV from? I got it from Walmart, man. It was a great deal. Same TV, same brand, same everything. So just to do an experiment. I, same uh, remote. Yeah, yeah, same remote. It's called a line of sight. You know, you got to you gotta be able to, you know, it, a lot of people just go, oh, it's haunted, period, bang, done, <laughs> end of story. You know, I, I'm not that way. You know, I'll get up here and try to figure out what's going on before I say, okay, something's haunted. And, uh, you know, he, to get up here and the guy in the next door turns his TV on. Guess what happens? His TV turns on. He starts channel surfing until he finds Daniel Boone and turns it up. The guy in this house tur- turns it to a football game. Well, it changes the channel in the other house. All right. Oh, my gosh. You know, ghosts is explained. So we left after six months and I told the owner, I said, dude, we're out of here. And he goes, well, where'd, where'd the seven demons go that lived underneath my stairs? I said, I think they left screaming after they got here. Reminds me of Poltergeist, yeah. the movie Poltergeist, where they were like at the beginning, they were looking at football or whatever, and they were changing each other's TVs. That's hilarious! Yeah. Oh my god! So, and you know, you know, a lot of people uh, wouldn't even think that. A lot of people wouldn't even think to pursue it that far. You know. Well, you know, you got to know your craft, and you know, and we don't know this craft yet, but you got to use a little common sense, and you know. Try to figure out why something is happening. Because like I said, not everything is paranormal. I agree with you. It's only about 1% out there where there is true paranormal activity. And, uh, you know, you don't have to have Satan walk up or the ghost walk up and go, Hi, I'm Bob. You know, it's not going to happen. No. Sorry. No. No. I wish it would. I'm pretty uh, sure you did some crazy calls. I had a call one time, and a lady said, she called me from New Orleans, and she said, I am scared. I don't know what's going on in my house. And I said, well, what's going on? She's like, well, when I'm sleeping, something's going on in my kitchen. I wake up, and all my dishes are done. I said, well, I'm, she's like, I think it's I'd a spirit saying, doing you. my dishes. And I said, well, send her over here, please. Yeah. <laughs> he got mad at me uh, and yeah. hung up. Hey, thank you very much. And how much does it cost? Uh, yeah. no, I'm, I, I lived <laughs> down the Ninth Ward for a little bit, so I know a little bit about a lot of the stuff that happens just down there. You know, I've been a cop, uh, so I've been trained on a lot of different things. You know, uh, I was a cop in Seattle and a cop in Fort Lauderdale. And, uh, you know, so, you know, a little bit of everywhere. I was a cop down the Ninth Ward. Oh. So you were with NO- NOPD for a time? Cause yeah, I was a must- Class A detective. I don't know if you remember, what year was it um, that the Booth brothers were down that we um, we had them in New Orleans? I'm I just wondering if Keith was around at that time. Yeah, yeah I think I, it was... When I was down there. Well, um... Let me see now. I think it was 2010. They came for um, they came down for Ahmed Lowe, uh, which was uh, the priestess Sally Ann Glassman has a festival every year, like around Halloween. Well, it's yeah, it's right before Halloween, and uh, they came for that, and then they they stayed here a little while. Um, they were going to work on yeah, some stuff here. Wanted, but- wanted, to, wanted to shoot uh, a vampire movie down there. 
Oh, I wish they'd come back. You know, I'll I'll be glad to to work with them and show them. And so they they stayed a little while. I mean, they were they did some filming, some voodoo, and we took them around like to some cemeteries and stuff like that, to Marie Laveau's grave and all that. But um, yeah, I mean, I wish they'd come back and do it again. So and bring you. That would be great. You can come, Keith. Thank you. It's <laughs> some of my old haunts and Monroe Street and all that now. You mm-hmm. know, before you could you could walk around and just do what you wanted to do. You can't mm-hmm. do that anymore. No, you can't. Well, Keith, it's been great having you and, and you soldiered through with your flu and your cold. I you know, hope we don't set you back and you have a relapse <laughs> talking so long. <laughs> no, it's fine. I've had fun. Good, good. Well, we'll have you on again, and anytime, yeah. anytime you're free, and once your show comes out, um, you can come back, and we'll talk about it, and uh, we're definitely going to check it out, huh, Dean? Yes. Definitely. definitely. Well, great. It was great having you, and we're going to wish you a happy new year, and uh, we'll be oh. checking out all your stuff, and we'll hope to hear from you and check in with you every now and then. Same to you, and again, thank you for having me. All right. The rock and roll ghost hunter himself. He should write a book, Dean. Yeah. That's a book yes. I'd like to read. <laughs> uh, you mi- you yeah. missed a couple of spots. So he said, well, you know, I got shot three times. I just had to hear that story, you know. So anyway, yeah, I mean, yeah. I'd love to, yeah, I'd love to hear more of it. But really, he should, he should, before it's all over, get it all down in the book. So, well, folks, that was... Uh, Keith H., the Rock and Roll Ghost Hunter, will be looking forward to his series, uh, Bourbon Spirit, coming up and to other things. And who knows, maybe we'll have some adventures with him that we can share with (laughs) y'all. Yeah. Mm-hmm.